So where are we with the world? Well, the axis of evil, one of the most derided yet accurate phrases of our time, which has been laughed off by the opponents of the war on terror, appears to be outliving and outdoing many of its doubters. The missile which hit an Israeli ship on the 14th of July, killing four IDF personnel, was sent to Hezbollah via Damascus and guided to its target by Lebanese radar. Iran has been sending not only munitions but troops to help fight the Israelis. Short of Kim Jong-il riding in on one of these missiles himself, I can't imagine a clearer example of the axis at work. But what has come from it? Absolutely nothing. And confident of our weakness, our lack of resolve and divided selves, Tehran and Damascus appear to have noted that when they put their heads above the parapet these days, not only does nobody shoot at them, nobody even shouts. So they've raised themselves even higher, and in the last week alone, Iran has not only admitted, but boasted of its supplying of missiles to Hezbollah, and boasted of its flouting of the international community over the nuclear issue. They have made the calculation that we are weak, and our weakness has proved, as so often, a provocation. The peaceniks and those who have counseled inaction or weak action have helped to bring us into a world in the next few years in which Iran will go nuclear and in which no one apparently will do a thing to stop them. Contrast that with the situation just in March last year when the journalist Joe Klein met with Assad in Syria. Please send this message. I am not Saddam Hussein. I want to cooperate, the, the Syrian president begged. When someone asks when a golden moment was, I'd say that was it. A period in which tyrants and despots felt genuinely concerned that they would be next and that the day of the great dictators were over. And where are we now? The tyrants have become emboldened, and five years on from September the 11th, we are, I believe, as a result, heading into a period as dangerous and avoidable as any in our history. We're heading there because we are losing faith in ourselves. Europe has been having a crisis of self-confidence for some time now, though I have some hope that Europe is coming out of this headless reverie. But exactly the least useful situation now would be if America joined in the crisis of confidence. The neoconservative resolution, whether the N-word is used or not, is vital not for reasons of pride, but for reasons of right. Through neoconservative thought and action, I believe that the West can deal with the problems of our time and deal with them early as truly liberal men rather than down the road as barbarians. But if Americans are swayed by the goons and propagandists who claim that spreading freedom is colonialism or that liberation is occupation or that up is down and left is right, if Americans are swayed by these people then it will not only be America that will suffer, it will be the cause of liberty and the possibility of freedom across the globe. Our thoughts will indeed have had great consequences, and future generations will not forgive us for them. At the conclusion of the closing of the American mind, Alan Bloom famously wrote, This is the American moment in world history, and one for which we shall forever be judged. The fate of freedom in the world has devolved upon our regime. The gravity of our given task is great, and it is very much in doubt how the future will judge our stewardship. Today, we are a little closer to hearing that judgment, a little closer to success, or a little nearer to failure. This is indeed the moment for which America will be judged. The predictable dolts will be embittered by and critical of your success, but far more people will rue your failure. In Britain and Europe, as I say, I see some signs of revival, of people finally speaking out again on issues on which they remained silent for too many years, of the throwing off and challenging of presumptions and platitudes which held sway for too long. For many of us, it is America which has inspired us and led the way. Neoconservatism is the first complete political philosophy founded in America to transfer slowly but measurably to Europe. Movements like the Henry Jackson Society in London and the Euston Group explicitly link to and look to the bold and inspiring philosophy which revived American conservatism in the last half century. We look to your example and we like what we see. I hope that you can find it in yourselves to continue the path you have been on.
Now is not the time for you to go wobbly on us. Thank you.